Hi, this is an update about the VESC 6, which I spent a lot of time on recently. And uh, here it is with an aluminum case assembled and put together. So let's take it apart and see what's inside. So the assembly is actually quite easy if you want to uh, do it in production. So you have like this cover, which is a piece of uh, PCB and uh, six screws, M3 screws that are uh, sit all around it. And the uh, PCB of the VESC is kind of squeezed in together with some uh, some foam pads now, but I'm probably have to look for a better solution later on. See if we get get it apart. There's also an antenna cable that I have to unplug. So in the case is an antenna here as well for the NRF chip so that you can use it without any additional hardware. So that's what it looks like inside. You can see the power stages up here with all the direct fats on the other side and the shunts on the top side. And you also have the ceramic caps really close to the power stage right now. So all these traces here are very short. So the impedance of the traces is uh, a lot lower than in the previous VESC, which also makes it a lot more reliable. For example, I have one motor with 0.6 micro hand rate that would kill the VESC 4 almost instantly, the DRV. And this one doesn't have a, can handle that motor just fine, and also all the other motors I've tried so far. So it seems to be able to, well, withstand a, more, a lot more abuse. This is what the case looks like, one of the other cases, without the PCB in, in it. And here is this rest part of aluminium, which is uh, right where the fats are. And this is one of those PCBs. So let's put it back together. Plug in uh, the antenna cable, which is a bit tricky sometimes. But I think it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, this time it's a bit more tricky than usual. There we go. Put on the lid. And uh, tighten the entry screws. Yeah, they're sticking to the screwdriver because it has a magnet. So I'm going to show a demo where I'm uh, connecting a motor and run it in a new mode which I've made to experiment with AC induction motors that can output a constant voltage vector that rotates uh, slowly in uh, using sine waves in open loop to uh, well which I, in this case, will use to just uh, run some current in the motor without turning it really fast and dissipate a lot of power. So it's put together, plugged in power, plug in the motor, USB, micro USB this time, and fire up VESC tool. connect to the motor and this time we're going to use the motor setup wizard which is more or less complete now since they're connected it will not show the connection phase page so it will jump right to well the configuration and first it asks you whether you want to load the defaults and yes we're going to do that we'll choose motor type FOC everywhere you can press the question marks right now to see what the parameters do to get some help press next and it warns you about the current limits, that you have to be careful to set them up properly. And we are going to be careful and uh, turn them up to 80 amps this time. Um, braking doesn't matter so much. And we're going to turn down the battery or input current because we're going to run it on a lab power supply. And when I run this test, it will not draw a lot of current from power supply, it will just circulate the current around the motor between the motor and the MOSFETs. So we can put a lot of load, uh, a lot of load on things without, uh, well, using so much input power. Next, 
and it asks if I want to configure a battery cutoff and I'm not going to run a battery so I just press no and go to step after that then it asks me about the sensors and this one doesn't have any so I'm going to run sensorless you can also choose like encode, uh, hall sensors and two different encoders and when you choose any type of sensor it will also show the a sensor configuration page in the wizard but we're going to go with no sensor and since we chose FOC, we're going to get to the FOC uh, configuration page which uh, has a new detection widget with uh, kind of a flow up here go to the help, measure resistance, flux linkage, inductance as well and apply and in the help you can see what all the steps do and what to do in case this fails and so on so it should be a lot easier to use so measure resistance and inductance it warns you about the motor making some noises which it does now yeah jumping a bit so you can see that all the fields that we received got green and we still have the flux linkage left if I try to apply here it will not work since we don't have this red field with the flux linkage and if you press next here it will warn you that you should finish the configuration unless you have entered things manually so I'm going to press no, measure flux linkage and then it warns you about the motor spinning up so I'm going to hold it in my hand now and uh, yeah, measure the flux linkage see if it works yep, apply, next and finish and it should work so let's go to the real time date tab also, yeah, I added some pages with some descriptions in VESC tool. So here in data analysis, you have some description with that does, also in app and motor configuration. And um, we switch on real-time data sampling. And we also switch on keyboard control to see if the motor runs. I'm going to use the arrow keys now. Um, and it seems to run fine. So um, in this test, I'm going to watch the temperature, but uh, before we make this test with the VESC 6, we're going to do it with the VESC 4. So, to have something to compare against and to see how well this heat conduction works. So, um, let's see. Unplug the power. No, USB. Unplug power. Unplug the motor. And plug in the VESC 4. I should be able to use the same configuration since. Uh, well, you can measure it on either one of those and apply it and it should work on all VESCs. Plug in, let's see, this one has a different USB cable. It's mini USB in the old one, a new one has micro USB. So, here we go. Open up VESC tool again, connect, and just write the same auto configuration to this one. And it should work. So let's try it. Yeah, it does. So, we're going to use uh, this command, the terminal, which is fuck open loop that I mentioned before. And uh, this will uh, take some parameter with current to use as an open loop current to use, an ERPM. And we're going to run 70 amps. I made this test before, and actually, those connectors, those motor connectors, when I ran it at 90 amps, they kind of started smoking. So, um, I didn't, wasn't able to do that for long at 90 amps and even at 70 amps they got so warm that I kind of touched them after a couple of minutes and everything gets really hot so yeah let's give it a try 70 amps and 50 ERPM and before we start we're going to prepare the real time data tab temperature switch on switch off this one and as soon as I start the command, you can see that the temperature will start to rise. We're also going to run a timer to see how fast things happen. So terminal, switch, also need heartbeats on for this command. We're running. And uh, yeah, switch on the timer. As you can see, we are pulling like 70 amps and uh, dissipating 180 watts of only losses in the system so things are going to get really warm and as you will see here after the motor MOSFETs reach something like 80 degrees 
or exactly after reach 80 degrees, the current will start to decrease. You can also see it in this bar. And uh, then at some point it's going to get stable around a certain current. Now I'm also feeling that the motor gets really warm from those 70 amps. So, yeah, the current gets reduced above 80. Now we are around 90. And uh, as you will see, also you can see that we are at 40 seconds, probably a bit more because we started the timer like 10 seconds later. And as you can see now, it kind of stabilizes here around uh, well, 36 amps or so. It actually drops to 35 or 44 after a while. So this is what the VASC-4 can take continuous without any kind of cooling. If you just blow a little air or add some kind of heat sink or so, it makes a lot of difference. But without any cooling, without any airflow in room temperature, the VASC-4 uh, can run 34 amps something. And uh, running this test for longer doesn't make any difference because it doesn't, the temperature doesn't change anymore. What I also can notice is that uh, now when I press escape to stop, the temperature will start decreasing like right away. So now I press, and now it starts to fall down again. And now I'm going to do the same test with the VASC-6. So, yeah, the cables are really warm and the MOSFETs are like, yeah, shouldn't touch them. Unplug everything. and uh, plug in the VASC-6 USB cable and uh, motor I actually have uh, see I have a tank of water over here because the motor cannot take this for too long it's like I can barely touch it now so this will uh, Cool it a little bit. I also have uh, a flux multimeter here, which I can set to temperature mode, and I can use a probe on the case of the VASC. So, yeah, let's connect. We still have the same configuration. This one is a lot cooler than the VASC 4 right now since we haven't run it yet and then we run the same command again open loop 70 amps and 50 rpm and run and uh, well, stop and restart the timer oh I see that I've got to switch on the heartbeats which have to be on in order for the command not to time out so let's redo this again open loop 70 amps, 50 RPM, start, start the timer and go to the real time plot. And we can see the temperature goes up here as well. And we can also use this probe and put it kind of on this, uh, can put it anywhere in the case, but I will put it here on this uh, empty screw, which actually seems to get as warm as the rest of the case. And uh, yeah, you can see that the temperature doesn't rise as fast as before. And um, you can see that the case has 27 degrees or so. And as it turns out, if you run this test at 70 amps, the MOSFETs seem to be about uh, 30 degrees warmer than the case. So if you want to be able to run 70 amps continuously, you have to keep the case below 50 degrees Celsius which uh, should be possible in most applications. So you can see now we're already at one minute and we're at 58 degrees and we're still running full current because the current limit hasn't started to uh, act yet since we are still below 70 or 80 degrees. And the case is getting warmer and warmer. Actually when the case is 50 degrees, which happens after a while when the MOSFETs are 80, then it's really warm to touch, so if you touch it to 50 degrees, you will kind of burn your fingers. So this really shows that the heat conduction works. Uh, while we're running this test, we can also show quickly some new features. For example, uh, firmware 
is built in to best right, best tool right now, and comes pre-compiled. And you can also see like a change log of the firmware and the updates in Vest tool. You can also see a change log of Vest tool, which I implemented recently. And they uh, also add some throttle curves to PPM and ADC and the Nunchuck app, where you can have different models like polynomial, exponential, and natural, and see what the result is if you changed the parameter. So, yeah, let's go to back to real time data. We're slowly approaching 80 degrees, and at 80, the current should start to get decreased. Yeah, so now we can see that uh, the fluke multimeter shore is almost 50 and the methods are at 80 degrees. So if I touch the case, if I touch the case now it's like quite warm to touch. And uh, now the current starts to decrease slowly. And as it turns out, if I just have it sitting here on my bench, it will go down to something like uh, 50 amps or so after 5 minutes and uh, stay around that at 55 amps. And uh, if you add some airflow or attach it to something, it will can probably run 70 amps continuous without any problems at all. I think it should also be able to run more than that, like uh, 90 or even 100 amps if you use uh, different connectors, but I'm not sure yet, I have to try that. And one of the first steps I'm going to make is to actually run this setup as it is now, with 70 amps and those connectors and so on, and motor submerged in water, and run it for an hour or so and see if anything fails, if you run uh, the whole thing really warm and at really high currents, which would be a good, quite good test for things. <clears throat> So what I also did is that I took apart the case right after doing this test and, uh, to see if like the capacitors or anything else got like really warm and that didn't seem to be the case which is quite nice and I also noticed that um, well we can also notice that the copper on this PCB is only 35 micrometers thick so um, even at 35 copper you can run those kinds of currents for extended amounts of times of time and uh, the final version is going, probably going to have like 70 micrometers so um, it's going to be even safer for doing that yeah anyway so we are at uh, almost five minutes at 70 amps or now 50 amps complete continuous for the last two minutes and it seems to keep up pretty well. Now actually the case is uh, 65 degrees now and the temperature of the fats is 87 so there's a bit yeah less difference but that's probably because you have less current difference now and this works kind of like uh, the more current you run the more difference you get between the MOSFET temperature and the case temperature so uh, and you can probably calculate this as well, at what temperature you have to keep the case in order to run certain continuous currents. So what you also can notice is that even if you don't run any cooling at all, since you have so much mass in the case now, you can uh, probably push the motors really hard for quite long before things start to get warm. And most setups, if you have like a 63-74 motor, it's at 200 kV or so, the motor is probably going to get warmer, warm a lot faster than the VESC itself. So, yeah, that's my demo for today. Thanks for watching.